By 1923, Germany was in an awful situation. Germany was struggling massively, you could say. Hyperinflation, invasion of the Ruhr, murders and uprisings, Munich Putsch. It's not a good time for the Weimar government. Someone needs to solve it. Our study of politics needs to know, how do you even solve those problems? And there is one man who does it. On the left hand side is my favourite German politician you'll ever study called Gustav Stresemann. He becomes Germany's chancellor in 1923, but the more important job he does is in 1924 and onwards, where he is the foreign minister for Germany. Gustav Stresemann almost solves all of these issues for Germany solely by himself. I've split up his solutions into economic and political, and we'll talk about the economic, the money solutions first here today. So first major issue, hyperinflation. Money is so valueless that people are completely screwed, cannot even earn money that, to pay off the things they need. How do you solve a problem like that? Well, Gustav Stresemann's solution was to introduce a new currency, the Rentenmark, uh, a temporary currency that would kind of evolve into the Reichsmark. But basically, the German currency right now is valueless, so I'm going to scrap it and make a new currency for people to use that has value. People could trade in their old currency for the Reichsmark, but it meant that prices did go down and it meant that people could pay for things again. People were no longer in poverty, could not afford food anymore. People were no longer struggling to pay rent, for example. It was a great solution. It stopped and ended hyperinflation, but it also meant that the people who lost their savings didn't really get their savings back. On top of that, the next, we need to then go a little step back and go, right, what caused hyperinflation? Oh, reparations caused hyperinflation. How do I fix the problem of reparations? And this is the best idea. This is the, one of the best things that Schreisman did. Uh, it's won him a Nobel Peace Prize, and it's called the Doors Plan. It's actually on the board there uh, in the red, yellow, and blue. The Doors Plan was an agreement with America. You know, he's foreign minister, he's talking to other countries, and it's an agreement with America to basically get America to pay Germany's reparations for them. See, America was the richest country in the world at this time and loved giving loans out to the world because it kind of meant that people needed the USA and the USA had power, but we won't need that. Germany organized this loan system where the USA would pay Germany money, 2.5 billion marks every year. That money would then, that 2 billion marks would go to European allied countries that needed it, for example. And then it, the European allied countries who were in debt to the USA would pay this back to the USA. Everyone was happy in the Doors plan. The USA gave out a loan and gained back their money with interest. Germany was able to pay off their reparations and then some could spend money on their country. And the countries that needed reparations like France and Belgium did get their reparations and also still paid off their debt happily. It won a Nobel Peace Prize because it stopped the invasions happening. France and Belgium invading the Ruhr, this ended that problem of that stress amongst all those other countries, which is why it won a peace prize. On top of that, Stresemann was not happy with just making reparations easier to pay. He thought 66 years of paying off 2 billion a year, that's kind of going to be impossible. Why don't we reduce it? Uh, he got in contact with this American statesman called uh, Young, as you can see on the right hand side, and organised a different plan called the Young Plan, where they agreed with all of those uh, allied European countries that needed reparations that they'd asked for too much in 1919. Uh, it's impossible to pay, especially for one country to pay it. So we're going to reduce it. The Young Plan reduced reparations from 132 billion gold marks to 50 billion gold marks. Instead of paying off their debt by 1988, Germany would pay off their debt by 1945. That was within people's lifetimes. That was a visible end goal, and it was a much more doable amount of money, which meant that Germany now could do things. The German government could pay for stuff. The German government could sort things out. It was suddenly a massive change for how Germany was seeing their economics or the economy for the here. And it's all Gustav Stresemann's work with other countries to do so. The thing is, it might not be perfect. Um, Mr. Algolani loved to say that um, Gustav Stresemann wasn't fixing Germany, he was papering over the cracks, which basically means that Gustav Stresemann didn't make these future-proof plans. They could all go wrong. 
they could go wrong. They weren't uh, plans that could that that were perfectly made out because they all relied on the USA. And if the USA were to lose all of their money, then Germany would lose all of their money too. Um, that seems like a problem. But anyways, I'll let you get on with at least the economic solution. So firstly, tell me who Gustav Stresemann is to revise him. How was hyperinflation solved? What's the Dawes plan? What's the Young plan? And how successful were these things? Did they actually solve the issues that we were supposed to? I'll leave that up to you, but please use the textbook as well as me. Good luck and I'll see you later.